spring training, a time when hope springs eternal and optimism runs high throughout baseball. The Giants have rewarded their faithful with a magical ride in two world championships in three years. The orange October of 2010 and the incredible journey last season have the Giants thinking big again as the orange and black return intact with their sights set on another title run. In the Valley of the Sun, the world champs prepare for the long season ahead. It's the Padres, Giants, next. It's Cactus League action as we come to you from the desert as the sun sets. We're at Scottsdale Stadium. It is the Giants taking on the Padres. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, yes, these games don't count, but it always seems that whenever Tim Lincecum starts, it's a story. What do you expect out of Lincecum tonight? Well, I expect him to pitch well. This will be the first time he gets back on the mound after he's had a blister problem, which forced him to miss a couple of starts. So now, all of a sudden, he has to have a little more pressure to go a little bit deeper pitch count into the game. Tonight, he'll be throwing 35, 40 pitches. But be able to watch him throw, be able to... Watch his velocity and see if that blister stays calm. That'll be the big story tonight. Sandoval in the lineup. He wasn't in the lineup, but he talked himself in with the manager, Bruce Bochy. And it's always fun to watch the Panda. All right, when we come back, we will have the starting lineups and the very first pitch of this game. And we'll do that right after these messages. Here at Scottsdale Stadium earlier, Tim Lincecum came out of the bullpen, which is located in right center field. See him walking next to Mark Gardner. And it's been a while since he has been on the mound, and the lineup that he'll be facing for the Padres it'll be Cabrera, Amarista, and Mark Katze. Jesus Guzman is going to be the clinic hitter, then it's Yonder Alonso. Jed Jerko is going to hit in the sixth slot. Everybody remembers Cody Ransom. He'll be hitting seventh, and it's Rene Rivera, eighth. And pitching and batting ninth is Freddie Garcia. 
Kamlinskum on the hill tonight for the Giants. Making a start after he missed a couple because of a blister problem. He did throw a simulated game. And that was five days ago. And they simulated him so they could control the number of pitches that he threw in each inning. And each inning was allowed to go 15 pitches. He says it's no problem. And, uh, and this isn't something that is new to him. The blister has always dogged him. Very commonplace to see him between starts with a big blister on his finger. But uh, it never really seems to keep him out of the rotation. They were very precautionary in that they had so much time in spring training. But now they've used up that time, and now he needs to start stretching out. Let's take a look at the defense behind Linscombe tonight for the Giants starting in their outfield from left to, left to left to right. It'll be Gillespie, Polanco, and Pence. That's your outfield. Crawford joined by Sandoval on the left side of the infield. Tanaka and Posey on the right side. And Hector Sanchez will be behind the dish in the squad putting down the signs. So Linscum tying his shoe before he gets out on the mound. And yes, this is Tim Linscum. It's not a relative. It's just Linscum with short hair. And the first pitch of the ball game is hit high and foul. So we get underway here in Scottsdale at 7.06. And it's 79 degrees. Excuse me. You got into Tom Mike and the weather... Became fabulous. There's a strike on the inside corner to make it nothing and two. Cabrera has an RBI this spring, hitting 258. He's eight for 31, and he will be the everyday shortstop for these Padres. Taps it slowly past Lincecum, Tanaka, and he throws it away. So just like that, Lincecum's going to be in the stretch. Is Tanaka flips it past Posey, and it'll be an error on Tanaka. Well, everything looked pretty good until the ball left his hand. I mean, the balance on the play looked great, and he is a guy that can be quite acrobatic. We've seen him take infield, and I mean, he has no problem throwing off the wrong foot. That definitely is the type of an error that will shake a player's confidence. Here's Amarista. Alexi Amarista playing center field tonight. Tanaka's going to get another shot. Shovels it to Crawford. Crawford! Double play! Oh, and that was not easy from Crawford's perspective. He got a real low changeup type of a toss from Tanaka. He made that play. A lot of shortstops with taking the throw and just been happy to get the one. Kind of a low changeup. And uh, when Crawford winds up getting rid of that ball, I bet his hand wasn't six inches above the ground. Nice play. Here's Katze. Mark Katze. You want to know what kind of spring he's having? Nine for 15. It's not bad. I've always liked this guy. Good hey, throw. Make an impression? Uh, he's no baby. This will be his 16th year at the big league level. 37-year-old. Out of Cal State Fullerton. Let's watch that play one more time from Brandon Crawford. Goes down low and the low sling. Gets him by a nibble. High and fouled on the left field line. Katze is one of those guys that could stay around this game a long time. Number one, he loves the game. He's no longer physically can play every day. But he's really developed into a great guy coming off the bench late in the game as a pinch hitter. And he'll give you a spot start now and get then. And still a good player. Just can't take the everyday beating that an everyday player takes. 92 on that last fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. <laughs> nasty. That was nasty. Giants coming up. Blanco to lead things off.
Padres come up empty. Giants are now coming up in the lineup that Freddy Garcia will be facing. Bruce Bochy made the lineup out. It looks like this. It'll be Blanco Crawford and Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval in the third slot. Then it's Buster Posey followed by Hunter Pence in the fifth slot. Sanchez, Gillespie, Tanaka, and Lincecum will hit ninth. On the hill tonight for the Padres will be the veteran Freddy Garcia, 12 years at the big league level, 36 years old. Different pitcher than he was 12 years ago. He doesn't throw quite as hard so far this spring. He's been rocked around a bit. 12 hits and six and two thirds. Still seven strikeouts, though. But he does not really want to challenge in the fat part of the strike zone because of his lack of velocity. He's trying to stay to a corner, and he's really become a finesse guy. Blanco hitting 214 this spring. He's six for 28. With Crawford to follow. Just off the plate. Dale Scott is the home plate umpire. Spring training for umpires, too. Dale Scott, normally a, a high ball umpire, been around a long time. The 2 1 delivery is foul back, 2 and 2. Now you shouldn't see any 90s from Garcia tonight. If you see one, it's it'll be the first one he's throwing all spring. You see Crawford with Sandoval chalking up. Bottom of the first here in Scottsdale. And Blanco. Decided at the last second to swing at that, and he strikes out. Let's take a look at the defense the Padres will employ behind Freddy Garcia tonight. Starting in the outfield will be Guzman, Amarista, and Katze. That's your outfield. Great arms on the corner. Cabrera and Ransom on the left side of the infield. Jerko and Alonso on the right side. And Rene Rivera will be in the squad putting down the signs. Crawford's average this spring over 300. He's 6 for 19. Does have a home run. And he takes a curveball on the first pitch and it snowballs in one strike. Said he's seeing the ball pretty good this spring. A little different spring for Crawford and Belt. The Brandons don't have to worry about making the team. And that's always you know, such a, a great time in your career as a big leaguer when you come to camp knowing that you're going to break no matter what you do in spring. Off the end of the bat, foul. It's now one ball and two strikes. But Brandon Crawford and Brandon Bell, they're two different animals now. They got hardened in the last two months of last season. September and October, they really grew up. And without their contribution, there's no way the Giants would have won that world championship. And they come into this camp with a lot of confidence because of it. Garcia with a strikeout. Here's Sandoval coming up. Remember, his first three at bats in the World Series, three home runs. This is one that was impressive. Yeah, even impressed Verlander. Wow. And this one just flat out stayed hit. And I just got the chills. He likes to play. Here's Sandoval. Yeah, he's supposed to get a day off. Flew back from Miami. Or from Puerto Rico, rather. After uh, Venezuela was eliminated from the WBC. And he was supposed to have a day off, but he went into Bochy's office and said, I want to play. Seven for 14 this spring with a home run and three RBIs. His home run last weekend went over the restaurant roof in right field. Here he follows this one back. Or that's a bar, I think, out in right field. It's whatever you want it to be. A bar with food. There it is. Well, he was flipping him over the top of that building today in batting practice, making it look easy. Very Barry Bonds-like. The Firehouse Pavilion. That's his best bolt right there, 87. And he does not want to throw it across the middle of the plate. But Garcia knows how to pitch. I mean, he can definitely get you out with below average stuff.
down the left field line and hit well. On the move is Guzman. He'll slide and he comes up short. Take a look at the effort from Guzman, former Giant. A lot of guys make that sliding play going into a wall. It's a great way to protect yourself. Two and two to Pablo Sandoval. Got him. And Freddy Garcia strikes out the side. Any number two coming up with a guest. Now the World Baseball Classic is hosted at AT&T Park, March 17th, 18th, and 19th. Japan and the Netherlands have qualified, and uh, you might very well see the USA, led by Ryan Vogelsong and Jeremy Affelt. The world is coming to AT&T Park next week. Check out tickets at sfgiants.com. No scores. Jesus Guzman to lead things off. We've got Bruce Bochy mic'd up right down by the Giants. Dug out as he watches Lincecum throw to Guzman. And Guzman doesn't waste any time as this one will eventually come down. And Blanco will put it away. Skip, when you watched him throw the simulated game on, uh, I believe it was Saturday. Right. You were impressed, weren't you? I was. Uh, and really, his uh, first outing against the Dodgers. I know he gave up some runs, but. Uh, I really thought he threw the ball very well that day too. Uh, used his fastball, had good uh, command of it, and, and uh, I thought had a good effort. And had a little blister, he had a setback, but uh, he faced hitters uh, Saturday and uh, had no issues with it. Threw great, and he, he just has a great focus this spring. I, I like where he's at right now, Kite. Well, he definitely was one of your keys, and sure. What we're looking at tonight this is the first time I've seen him. He's he's down with everything. He's got snap on everything. He does, and like I said, he's he's just got great concentration. Uh, um, you know, during his bullpens, uh, he just looks very uh, determined to get back on track. If you look at it, at his uh, uh, delivery, it, it's just it's so consistent right now, and I think he's uh, pitching with a lot of confidence, right? Right now at this moment and you know Timmy is way ahead of where he's been uh, at this point this spring even though uh, we had to slow him down because of the blister. He does look different though doesn't he? He does. He's stronger. He, I mean if you look at him uh, he's put on a couple pounds good pounds. It's evident he worked hard this winter and came in camp in great shape. And, uh, you know, he's getting at, he's really getting after it in the uh, weight room before uh, the workouts. And, uh, I think Timmy's uh, set to have a nice year. Well, he lost eight pounds when he cut his hair, too. Yeah, a different look, you know. It, it does change your look when you cut your hair that much. Yeah, I'm not sure about that pitch. It looked pretty good unless he called it up. But um, 
you know, he just he just looked fresh and uh, just so uh, excited about having a new slate here, a new year, and uh, I just think we're we're going to see Timmy uh, like we know him and and uh, pitch great. This is Jed Jerko coming up with Alonzo at first base. Down low. But it's a little bit different feel coming into this camp following a world championship than what we saw in 2011 following 2010's world championship. There's no, the franchise show is not here. It's a, it's a much quieter, calmer camp. Well, it, it is. And, and part of it is because of the WBC. Uh, we lost a couple of vocal guys. Uh, uh, Sandoval was gone. They got real quiet when he left. And Jeremy Affel, of course. And, but uh, I, I like to. The way the guys are, are going about their business, uh, uh, it's just a different spring. It, it's going to be a long spring. We have to be careful. We don't overwork uh, the pitchers or or the players too. And uh, but you know, with uh, the guys you know, being away so long, uh, you know, every club's dealing with it. But us more than most clubs. I think uh, Milwaukee's got um, uh, more players uh, than we do. But still, it's. It's just different not to have those guys around. I know uh, Scudero will be here tomorrow. Pablo, I was not planning on playing tonight, but he came to my office and really wanted to play. And, uh, and so I put him in the lineup, and he's, he's excited about being back. He's disappointed about how things worked out for those guys. And, but it's good to get these guys back. And now we're, we're getting in the area where, you know, we're starting to ramp up their play and, and uh, starting to get them ready. Uh, you know, first couple weeks, we really backed off a lot of these guys. You know, we uh, one thing about we're talking about this during batting practice about Pablo Sandoval and look, it seems like every other day somebody's writing around, writing about his weight, but the guy wants to play and he wants to play every day. He does. He, he just he, he's a ball player. I mean, he has that passion uh, to play baseball. He he wants to be on the field. Uh, he's disappointed in spring training when, when he's not out there. That's kind of old school. Uh, and, and Willie Mays, who's here, he gets on these guys when they come out of the game early or uh, they take a day off. He says, I, I I never did that, but, you know, the, uh, the game's changed a little bit. But Pablo is one of those guys. He, he wants to be out there. And, you know, he's working hard on this weight. We we have a, a ways to go. Uh, not too bad. He's made uh, a lot of progress since he's been here. He's, I think he's lost, I don't know, 15 to 20 pounds since uh uh, we got him from day one, so we still have a, a little ways to go. But I will say, like you said, he wants to play, and he also uh, does all we ask. He, he's here early in the morning doing his uh, conditioning, and uh, after the game, he has to do it. Uh, I, I think that's something the Giants fans need to hear more of because he is one of your hardest workers. He is. He's, uh, he's so uh, respectful to uh, the training staff and all of us. Uh, yeah, he knows. You know, he's got to battle this, and uh, he's a better player when he does get down to a certain way. He's got more range, and uh, that ground ball to get through, who knows? He might have got, you know, hopefully by the end of spring we have him where he, uh, he gets to that ball. One ball and one strike to Cody Ransom. Alonzo at second, Jerko at first. And that breaking ball is... Well, that is a curveball, isn't it? That's a curveball. It's a good one too. That yeah. could have been called a strike. Yeah, he's you know he, he's keeping it down. He, he's got a good feel on all his pitches uh, at this point, and you know we're trying to get him to around 45 pitches, and you know starting to get up there this inning. So uh, more likely this will be his last inning. I just hope he gets through it. But you know what, coach? You said it. He's down with everything, and if you think back to the previous, you know, I can't even remember if he ever came to camp and he was ever able to get the ball down right out of the out of the get go. He was always missing high. And that's getting back to what I was talking about: his concentration. You know, occasionally last year he would drift mentally and and uh, and get out of sync. But as you see uh, his look right now, I mean, he just locked in uh, with his focus and um, really uh, is putting the ball in a great spot, just like that pitch. It's every pitch. It's a pitch at a time. That's how these pitchers have to think, and that's what Kenley normally does. But last year, lost some confidence, and as you know, when you lose that, you you have uh, distractions, and uh, your your mind's uh, it's going a hundred miles an hour. But uh, he he's slowing it back down the way he used to. 
Here's Rene Rivero. Two outs. Two on, no score. We're with Giants manager Bruce Bochy here in the top of the second inning. The skipper's going to stay with us through the the inning break, and we'll chat a little bit about postseason and uh, just get some updates on what's going on in camp as Rivera takes a call strike. Well, I like the fact he used the fastball for strike three. That's something we saw him do last October, get more confidence in that fastball. Well, if you go back his uh, last couple of springs, if, if you remember, he came out throwing a lot of curveballs and change-ups, and he, you know, he, you know, we had a hard time getting him to use the fastball. In fact, we sent him down to uh, uh, pitch a, a, a minor league game so he would use it uh, and get command of it. And he's uh, he's aggressive with it right now. He's using both sides uh, of the plate and um, has the best command I've seen him uh, you know, since what two years ago. And you know, for these pitchers, they need to be reminded we're we're not so concerned with. Uh, uh, results right now. We we want them leaving camp with command of that fastball. We have a couple uh, things here when they have to throw the fastball and they have to throw it, it down and in a way in certain uh, counts. And um, you know Timmy's doing a good job with it. Great pitch there. Again down. I, I'll get with Rag and see where he's at. Well, Sanchez blocks it. As Lincecum strikes out two. Season and then talk about how well he did. Yeah, um, you know we knew that so we were going in postseason that we would only need four starters. And if you look at the five starters, uh, the one guy we thought would be the, uh, the best out of the pen, the most resilient, uh, uh, would be Timmy. Also, he's the one that uh, you know had the toughest year as as a starter. So, you know, I approached him with it and uh, Dave was with with, uh, with me there and he was all in on it right away. Yeah, you know, he said, hey, if you think that's what's best, I just want to help this team move forward and, and get on to the World Series. So he had a great attitude. That's where it started. And and um, he ran with that. I think he looked forward to the challenge and uh, he was determined to show that, uh, you know, he he's a tremendous pitcher, which he is. And there, there were a lot of doubts about Timmy at that point, but um, I think it, it really helped it, you know, his confidence in the fact that he not only pitched well, but he contributed so much to, to help us win the World Series. And my hope was that he would carry that into uh, this spring and in this coming season. And uh, he looks like he's gotten on track. And But it's not easy to, to have a guy that's won two Cy Youngs and uh, it's just done an unbelievable job for us and ask him to go to the bullpen. Uh, that's never an easy thing, just like Zito when we didn't put him on the roster. But, you know, he's uh, it's a credit to him how unselfish he was about it and says, hey, I'm here to help. Bruce, when you when he came in the first time and did so well, did you say, all right, this is going to work? I did. I, I, you know, I really thought it would work. Uh, I mean, what a great weapon to have. Uh, Come uh, out of the bullpen, a guy that could uh, be a long man or a short, short man, and uh, uh, but I didn't know it would work that well, to be honest. And, uh, and once I saw him uh, do it, I, I knew, you know, he relished in it. it you know, <laughs> it's more of a spur of the moment deal where he didn't have to think about it and, <clears throat> and to go back to start against the Cardinals when he had time to prepare. You kind of, you know, I think overthought at times and. Uh, you know that start didn't go very well, but you know, when, when he he pitched uh, from the bullpen, he just got loose and uh, threw a few pitches, and here we go. Here's Buster Posey, that game five against Cincinnati. Buster Posey hit the grand slam. Did he help you be a better manager that day? He did. Uh, he he made us all look smart. <laughs> you know, I mean, what a year! I, I, I mean, these guys checked off about every box you can check off at a young age, and really, it's incredible what he has accomplished. And, uh, I got to tell you though, he's not big on playing here at night. These lights aren't the best. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he went back to back uh, uh, days. He's not swinging the bat very well right now. He's trying to get his timing. I had a rough day yesterday, but uh, uh, I do know that this is not his favorite uh, time to play uh, here in Scottsdale at night. Well, he's ahead in the count, two and one, with Hunter Pence on deck. Bottom of the second, we're with Giant skipper Bruce Bochy. As this is tapped to Cabrera. And Cabrera is going to throw out Buster Posey. 
And we're showing Coach the Grand Slam now that uh, Buster Posey hit off of Matt Latos. And I remember thinking at the time, just a sacrifice fly would do. Well, he did a little better than that. Though. Yeah, well, I mean, what a great at bat. He fouled off some good pitches. I think it was a full count and got a pitch he could handle. And I, you know, I'm thinking like you, you know, at least a sack fly. Uh, he always, you know, like it when Buster's up there with runners in scoring position. He, he's got a knack for, for driving in runs and putting the ball in play. And uh, he did more than that and got a pitch he can handle. And, you know, I, we barely hung on, though, he, even after that, as you know, uh, as we got late in the game. I, I got to tell you right now, I don't know if I can be more nervous than sitting here with Pence up because uh, I know he can shank a ball over here, and we had no chance. Jeff Kent was here last week, and Pence uh, shanked the ball over here in the dugout and smoked him, so I'm a little nervous right now. Looked like somebody on the first tee at Pebble Beach. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad I didn't hit anybody. I, I'm still wondering how I got all the attention of that shot, and Vogel's only hit three people. <laughs> yeah. It's two and one to Hunter Pence. It was a good day, though, wasn't it? A great day. Oh, it's hard to beat that. Uh, I did a chance to play Augusta on Pebble in the same week. I mean, that's, that's living a dream. Yes, it is. Did you yeah, see where uh, Jeremy I fell through? Yeah, he, uh, he just finished thrown in the WBC. Had a had a pretty good inning, did he? Yeah. So you're watching your guys pretty close. Yeah, we are. I saw Casilla throw uh, the eighth inning today. He had, he had a one, two, three inning. He threw great. Uh, yeah, we keep an eye on him. Uh, I mean, Romo, we get a little nervous uh, with that stressful inning he had, but he's here and uh, he's all set to go. Three and two to Hunter Pence. And Pence takes a breaking ball, strike three call. Coach, one more one more question about Buster Posey because it, you know hitting is timing, and you, know, you like to put together repetition. You like to go play every day to get your swing down. And right now, you mentioned he is struggling, but you also have to kind of hold him back. That's one guy you have to watch and, and sort of watch over so he doesn't get burned out early here in spring training. Right, right, and uh, we we had to do it last year because of his injury, and it worked. So. I'm kind of taking uh, the same pattern that I used last spring as far as using them, and and we had plenty of time. And, and yeah, Buster, he he has his routine, and uh, you know he he wants to approach it the same way he did last year because of, of the great year he had. So you know he has and uh, getting a whole lot of at bats uh, or catching time. He's playing first uh, tonight, uh, as you can see. He'll be off tomorrow, and. Uh, Next week, uh, he'll we'll ramp up his innings, and I'll start putting with the pitchers I want him to catch. Uh, like Timmy uh, tonight, he, he needs to catch him some uh, before we leave camp. And, but he's uh, he's on schedule. Uh, you know, he's he's one of those guys. Uh, he's, we certainly don't want to peak too early, as we say. And uh, we we want to get him hot at the right time. All right, it's only two to Hector Sanchez, and he struck him out. Skip, whether it's in your office or behind the batting cage or doing what we just did, it's always a pleasure. Well, good, good talking with you guys. And uh, as, as you can see, first night game, uh, we're scuffling right now. It's all right. All right. After two here in the desert, it is nothing, nothing.
opening week. Individual tickets are still available for Ring Ceremony Day, presented by AAA. That's the 7th of April. The Giants Magnet Schedule Day, presented by REMAX. That's Monday, April 8th. And the World Champion Snow Globe. It's awesome. Presented by Comcast Sportsnet on Tuesday, April 9th. Visit sfgiants.com slash tickets to purchase tickets. Check out the snow globe. I, I already did. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. It's City Hall. Parade, City Hall, the trophy. Graffiti. Yeah, graffiti was big. They had more graffiti this year on the parade. Oh, is that confetti or graffiti? It, well, you... you Draw on the confetti and he does graffiti. <laughs> Thanks for picking me up. <laughs> Here's Garcia. He takes a call strike. Yep. He wore his colors all off season. You walk around the Valley of the Sun, especially here in Scottsdale, you're going to see a lot of orange and black. Tanaka. Posey. Tanaka sailed one again, and Buster Posey. Not a problem. Tanaka's he's, he's goosing him up there right now. He's not playing with a lot of confidence. It's a little Steve Sachs like. Steve Sachs back in the game this year. Going to be is. a first base coach with the Diamondbacks. How about that? Northern California kid. Glad to see him back in the game. Everest Cabrera. Cabrera reached on a Tanaka throwing error. And that let off the ball game. It was great. I was walking through the Giants clubhouse today and talking to the guys, saying hello. For me, it was the first day of school. It's my first day down here. And I'm just thinking, this is great. And I actually said it a few times. And then I got some strange looks from guys who have been here a whole month. The coaches in particular. They're about ready to go well, north. Here's the deal. There are 19 games left on the schedule, 18 dates. One date is a split squad. To give you an example of what you're talking about, they've played 16 games. So it's not half over with yet. That's a long camp. It is a long camp, and that is how the games evolved. A little bit longer this year because of the WBC. There's a strike to... Cabrera, three and one, and it, it gets very long for everybody, but especially the coaches and the manager and the trainers and Murph and us, everybody. <laughs> Except Who for me. <laughs> I came in a month late. I'm happy as can be. I'll tell you one thing about Linscombe tonight, he's only allowed one ball in the air, and that was a pop up to Jesus Guzman to let off the second inning. Everything's been either a strikeout or a ground ball, and that is important. When a pitcher's doing that, he's got location down, he's got movement, he's got command, and he's got confidence. And we've seen all those from Lincecum tonight. This will be a payoff pitch to Cabrera. And he taps it again slowly. Lincecum off the tip of his glove. And then it rolls past Tanaka. And Cabrera is probably going to have a base hit. It's not going to be pretty, but it'll look like a line drive tomorrow in the, in the box score. See Edlifson, the sinker baller, getting heated up. So Cabrera right now thinking that the secret to get on base is hit it in the area of Tanaka. Although that play should have been made by Lincecum. Yeah, it would have been a good play. But had it have gotten past Lincecum, I'm not sure Tanaka wouldn't have gotten him. I don't believe he would have. Well, you're an old second baseman, so I'm going to agree with you. Here's Amarista, who went into a double play in the first. And uh, Cabrera goes, and Sanchez's throw is late. And uh, Cabrera, a stolen base. Well, that's his game. I mean, he's going to steal bags. When he gets on base. I mean, he thinks steal. Both of us are scrambling now to see how many he had last year. Cabrera last year had 44 stolen bags. How many times has he caught? 
Well, it was the third most in the major leagues. He was 44 for 48. That ranked fourth best in baseball. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You could steal 44, get thrown out four times. And remember, Linscombe has always been a guy that not that quick out of the stretch. In tight, away for the target. Two balls and no strikes. He almost threw that fastball by Hector Sanchez. Katze to follow. And now it does get away from Sanchez. I don't know if Sanchez that just moved on Sanchez. No, well, anytime he throws a two seam fastball, it, it, it can move. It can start on the inside corner to a left handed hitter and go completely the other side of the plate. And that's exactly what happened with that sinker. He really is the hardest guy on the staff to catch. It's a pass ball. You see Sanchez shaking his head. And why he is hard to catch is, you know, he doesn't have great command with the fastball. At least he hasn't had in the last several years. And he has unpredictable movement. But sometimes he'll throw a two-seam fastball and it'll sink three inches. And he'll throw it again and it'll sink 15 inches. And that time, type of inconsistency of movement is not easy to, to catch. Especially with a guy on third base. Look out. A line drive up the middle. And the Padres are on the board first. It's one nothing, San Diego. So a little infield hit, stolen base, wild pitch. And this will probably be Linscombe's last hitter. Remember the pitch count? They wanted to get him up to about 45. Here's Katze. Katze struck out to end the first. And Marisa has got a chance to go as well. Padres come in eight and nine. That's their record. Giants record is odd. Six wins, seven losses, three ties. Pretty good pitch, but off the plate. One ball and no strikes. Yes, there. There are ties in the Cactus League. Blown away again, and it's two and zero. Oh. You're right about Amrista. Padres picked him up. Last season in a trade with the Angels, and they really liked his explosiveness off the field. Not a big guy, just five eight, but he could scoot. And that's a bullet, and it's fair down the right field line. Pence has got to go a long way. Amarista is going to score easily. Katze is going for three, and the veteran is going to slide into third with a triple, and it's two nothing. Katsi's looking for some air. That's it. Edlefson's coming in as Bruce Bochy comes out. We're going to take a break. We're in the desert. Padres have scored twice. It's 2 0 San Diego.
Worse than authentic opening day at AT&T Park. That's right. The Giants will be taking on the Dodgers from L.A., but you can get to the yard and watch it on the scoreboard. Free admission, free hot dogs to the first 5,000 fans, free foam fists to the first 3,000 fans. The World Series trophies will be on display. So check it out. Monday, April 1st, doors open at noon, game time, 1 p.m., and you can log on to CSNBayArea.com for more info. Uh, free foam fists? Yeah, the first 3,000 fans. Free foam fist. You got to get a couple of those. I'm in. Two nothing Padres. We're in the third inning. Edlison replaces Lincecum. Edlison in his fifth game. He's thrown four innings, and he's allowed a couple of earned runs. Had a really good outing. This past weekend. Yeah, he's a sinker baller. He's got the best sinker ball in in camp. Giants pull the infield. Not all the way in, but in. Outside corner strike to Jesus Guzman, who popped out to Blanco to lead off the second. We're in Scottsdale. I'm Gwen Kuiper along with Mike Kruko. Our maiden voyage in 2013. Down low. You saw the first pitch sinker from Edlison at 91 miles per hour. And last year he was high 80s. Guy's really excited about the fact that he's pumped up his velocity as he's coming to spring this year. And if you can put sink on a ball and you can consistently get balls hit on the ground, you are a commodity. You see Dave Rigetti, Mark Gardner, the two headed pitching monster. Pitching coach monster the Giants have. The Giants have two two headed monsters. They've got two hitting coaches, two pitching coaches. Yeah, they, they so far had the manager of the year in the WBC. Hensley Mullins, who is manager of the team from the Netherlands, and they have been the surprise team. I mean, Italy and Netherlands have been unbelievable in the WBC. Three and one to Guzman. With Edelson, it's about one thing. He's got the stuff. It's just a matter of command. But in this situation, because he is a sinker baller, if he walks Guzman here, it's not the end of the world. Yonder Alonso is on deck, and this is tapped off of Guzman's foot. And it's now three and two. Sergio Ramos back with the Giants after his tour with the Team Mexico in the WBC. Good to have him back. Three balls, two strikes. Look out. Yeah, remember the WBC is going to end at AT&T Park. March 17th, 18th, and 19th. Tickets are still available. Two teams are in. Japan and the Kingdom of Netherlands. Now, the remaining field, USA, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Italy, two of those four will join the Netherlands and Japan, and they will be at, it's probably our favorite park, right? Yeah. AT&T Park. So mark it down on your calendar, 17th, 18th, and 19th. And you go to sfgiants.com. I know that uh, a lot of our folks, as this is fouled in front of the Giants dugout, our folks that work in the PR department, all around the ballpark. Right now, that's what they're focused on, is, uh, is that tournament. So hoping that uh, great crowds show up to watch the World Baseball Classic. 
Outside and low. Two balls and one strike. And you're right. It is our favorite ballpark. I mean, now that they've torn down Fulton County Stadium. That. And, you know, Candlestick's close, right? It's the call on the outside corner. It's two and two. I do have to tell our folks out there listening a story about my partner, Kipe. My last pitch in the big leagues was thrown at Fulton County Stadium and my arm blew up. I walked out of there and that was the last day I was ever a big leaguer. Not my favorite place. Well, mine either for that matter. 2-2 two -two pitch. Just off the outside part of the plate. Three balls and two strikes. And years later, when they tore that place down, they imploded it to build the new Turner Field, which is a great yard. I didn't think much of it. But about two months after they imploded the thing, I get a picture from my partner, and it's the stadium getting blown up. Yeah. And that picture is on my wall. Swing and a miss, throw down the second. Crawford is not going to be able to make the play home. And now they've got Guzman in a rundown, and uh, it'll be Tanaka to tag him out, and that'll end the inning. Three spot for the Padres. Giants are coming up. Third inning, and uh, before the ball game, Barry Zito with his group strikeout for troops on the field, chatting with some of our veterans, and then uh, honored before the game. And then uh, one of those gentlemen threw out the first pitch to Barry Zito. The first hitter for the Giants will be Cole Gillespie, and we have Barry Zito down, I believe, in the Giants' dugout. As Garcia throws a call strike very uh, very nice on the field talk about those guys yeah those guys are awesome they've been out here all weekend we flew them out from uh, San Diego Balboa Naval Hospital and uh, they were at Cleveland uh, the White Sox and then here the last three days they've been having a great time so a lot of smiles on their faces yeah yeah definitely we're just trying to take them out of their environment take them out of the hospital and you know hopefully they can forget about uh, all the recovery and the rehab and stuff they've been going through and just you know have some fun out in uh, spring training well, that is definitely something that you and your wife Amber are quite passionate about and uh, it's something that you've recently said that once you're done playing you're going to continue to work with strikeout for troops. Yeah definitely I mean uh, we just want to increase the awareness of that you know the, the troops and the veterans are separate from the political beliefs you know we got to support these men and women. We saw you chatting with Dave Dravecki before the game. I'm sure you talked to Dave before. Yeah, he's great. We had dinner with uh, he and his wife, Jan, when we were in uh, Denver last year. and we've, we've established a pretty good relationship. He's a pretty neat guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's a beauty. I used to watch him in San Diego, but I don't want to tell him that because I know that guys don't want to feel old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's 3-1 and one to Cole Gillespie. 3 nothing Padres. We're visiting with uh, Barry Zito. As Garcia looks into... Rivera Garcia's got five strikeouts 
on deck hitter is Kensuke Tanaka. And uh, now he's got. Well, there's uh, Barry Zito talking to Dave Javecki. I don't think Barry can see this, but uh, it was a nice exchange on the field. Yeah, I can see that. I see. You can see it. And uh, <coughs> he's Mike played with Dave Javecki. I had a chance as a broadcaster early in my career to broadcast games. And uh, he's just really a neat guy. There wasn't anything about the guy that you couldn't like. A lot of heart, huh? A lot of heart. And yeah. nasty, too, I might tell you. Yeah. So here's Tanaka. So how is this camp been different than last year? I remember last year was one of those camps where you probably wanted to forget about. But you just go into Colorado and throw a complete game shutout. How about that? That's the nature of baseball, man. <laughs> it's unpredictable. That's why we all love it so much. You know, I haven't been making a lot of adjustments mechanically this year. I've just been trying to keep my time and keep my rhythm, everything that I did at the end of last year. So it's just more about, you know, staying in shape, staying healthy, and, and uh, you know, getting all four pitches in there for strikes. Well, we thought your game five against St. Louis was the turning point in the playoffs for the Giants, and it had to be a tremendous thrill for you. It was, yeah. It was really fun. I mean, it was a very... Uh, special moment you know in my career and, and, uh, and for our team as well you know we didn't lose after that and I think we just had so much momentum after that it, it was just unstoppable well Mike is obviously talking about your pitching in that uh, in that game but me I was all about the bunt <laughs> I mean that was a part of my game and when I saw you lay down a bunt it was Tanaka back to Garcia who will throw him out I'm thinking, yeah, this is what we're talking about. And turns out you've had that in your repertoire your whole career. <laughs> well, you know, by necessity, I think. Uh, we take BP all the time in San Francisco, and I'm usually not trying to pull the ball. I'm trying to hit the ball the opposite field, hit some line drives, and, you know, just play the short game. You've got to know your limitations. This is, uh, that's, you, I think you took a peek right there to see where the third baseman was. Oh, yeah. A little sneaky action right there. Oh, wow. They had no idea. Of course, neither did we. Look at this. Beautiful. <laughs> you know what? You might ought to take over the, the coaching instead of Tim Flannery on bunting. I'm telling you. <laughs> Flan's incredible. He is just, he's turned us all into such good bunters. I mean, it's, it's actually much more difficult than it looks. You know, Kai, it's, it's uh, Kruk, I'm sure you know too. I mean, you know, as a pitcher, you just have to do that. It, it's absolutely. Uh, it's such a huge part of the game. That's oh, wow. Foul down the right field line. Well, it keeps you in a game. It gives you a chance to win. And, and your team in particular wins a lot of games by one run. And it comes down to plays like this. You execute, and it's a difference maker. But I've never seen such speed from you. I'm impressed. <laughs> I was running as fast as possible. I'm glad I didn't blow a handy. It worked <laughs> out good. So are we. <laughs> Here's the one one to, to or to uh, is this Monell Johnny Monell is pinch hitting See what was your offseason like as a world champion for the second time? It was it was great. We actually traveled a lot. You know people say oh you got to travel before you have kids So we we took that off we went to Costa Rica we went to a bunch of different parts of Europe You know New York Vegas. I mean we just lived it up and had a great time Where would you tell a couple of old guys to go that you saw this winter? Well, it depends on the vibe, you know. Barcelona was actually pretty cool. I got to say, I mean, we were there for New Year's. So it was, you know, it was pretty chilly, but what a cool vibe that city has. And most of us in California can speak Spanish, at least, you know, get around. So, you know, getting around in Europe, you know, with Spanish is kind of a cool deal because then you go to France and you got no chance. <laughs> so, That's true. <laughs> it's a little intimidating out there. You can't get breakfast to save your life either. Here's the 2 2 to Monell, and Monell oh, wow. hits one a mile down the right field line. It is foul. Oof. That should count for at least half a run. Jackie Monell way out in front of a Garcia off speed pitch, and he just hooked it foul. See, have you seen any young pitchers this camp that have impressed you? Gosh, you know what's crazy is, is in spring training, we don't see a whole lot of the team. I mean, outside of when we're doing drills and such in the mornings before the games because, you know, for the home games, uh, we stay for five versus teams we play. And, and if we play teams we don't play during the year, you know, we just go in the weight room and do our work and stuff. So um, 
you know, I've been trying to see Kickham throw. I've been trying to see Heston throw. Uh, a lot of these guys, and of course Heath, Heath Hembry as well. So uh, I know some of these guys are making impressions, but I just haven't got a chance to uh, catch their game action yet. Three and two to Monell. We're talking to Barry Zito. Three nothing Padres with two outs here in the third. Blanco on deck should Monell reach. Garcia with six strikeouts. Giants have not had a base runner. They do have one home run foul, which counts for nothing. It was fun to watch. It was fun to watch. That was a Daryl Evans foul ball right there. Did he get it? Got say back. Gone. There it is. So he straightened it out, and the Giants are on the board. A pinch hit home run for Johnny Monell. You don't see that very often. When a guy hits one foul, that hits one fair. Impressive. Two strikes, swing of the bat. The Giants finally put a ding in the outing of Freddie Garcia. Break the ball, a little bit of a hanger. Boom. So here's Blanco, who struck out in the first inning. The at bat that Monel just had, he hit the ninth pitch out. So Z, tell us about your spring. How do you like the way you're throwing right now? I'm feeling pretty good. I actually I felt all right my first game, and uh, you know my second game I felt pretty locked in, and then last game was just weird and rain delays and hail and you know all that stuff. Usually we're ready for that stuff by the season, but in spring training, third start, man, it's tough to go out there, you know, get shut down for a half hour, go back out. Um, so my timing was definitely affected that day, and. Uh, you know, I usually pride myself on being able to keep it locked in during rain delays, but that wasn't one of them. I remember Blanco. a couple years ago in Detroit when you did that very thing. After an hour and a half rain delay, came back to beat the Tigers. That was a good day. I mean, we got ten runs, I think, in the in the first couple innings. I was, in, I said, give me the ball. I'm going five. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and two strikes to Blanco with Crawford on deck. Giants on the board on the Monell home run. And that's in the dirt. It's two and two. See, the curveball has always been a big part of your arsenal, but down here in, in Arizona, it's not an easy pitch to, to, to get to, to work for you. How, how's that pitch going? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice to actually have a little bit of a disadvantage when throwing that because it makes you that much more, uh, you know, focused on getting out front with it and, you know, being good with it. And then when you go back to a regular climate, you're like, you know, hey, well, there it is. There's some extra break. So. Uh, I think it's the same way as throwing in Colorado. You know, you have to be so much more crisp with your pitches. That's a base hit for Blanco. They're going to throw behind Blanco. Blanco is going to try to advance, and that play really works. And that'll end the inning. Barry, thanks a lot for stopping by. Barry Zito visiting with us here in the third. Giants on the board. Go ahead to the fourth. By the law offices of Stephen Moskowitz. Aggressive, accessible, experienced tax lawyers. Padres 3, Giants 1, Lincecum, Edlison, and now Ramon Ramirez will take the hill here in the fourth inning. The 
2010 Giant Ramon Ramirez now the 2013 Giant he's trying to make the club well very happy to be back in San Francisco and put on the orange and black again and when Ramirez is right I mean he is a guy that will go low 90s with a fastball good hard slider and a changeup and you think back to all the contributions he gave that 2010 championship team he was a big contributor oh, my word Ian Lopez came over right before the trading deadline and you know look a couple of names that you know, veteran guys well they were more than just a couple of names and veteran guys they were staples coming out of that bullpen well, we just had Barry Zito on and if you remember in the game five in St. Louis it was the fourth elimination game for the Giants that they won. And then they won the two when they got back home, but he was sensational. He was absolutely he locked in. Got a little weird in the first inning, but he got out of it. And after that, he just settled in. I think it was seven shutout innings, wasn't it? Yep. Off the end of the bat to Buster Posey. And Jerko's retired on one pitch. That's a gift in spring training. A one pitch out? You better do this. Although pitching coaches want to see you work a little bit more. The way you get strength is you break your arm down. 10, 15 pitches as a reliever. You come back the next time out, your arm's stronger. And they don't really, they, they, they kind of like to see you have a long inning. One pitch out, say, yeah, you need a little more work. Here's Cody Ransom. And the first pitch is popped back into the parking lot. And it's 0 1 to Cody Ransom. The eighth place hitter, Rene Rivera, is on deck. 3 1 Padres, fourth inning. Down low. This is the first night game in the Cactus League for the Giants. They will have a split split squad night game against the Indians on the 16th. See Cody Ransom, 37 years old now. This is his 16th year of professional baseball. He's got four years at the big league level, and his first seven were with the Giants. He's kind of got a Rand McNally going, doesn't he? Yeah, he's been around. Ramirez breaks him down. Well, Saturday, 7 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, Giants Classic Games, Championship Edition, NLDS Game 5 at Cincinnati. That is the clincher. And then Sunday at 3 p.m. on NBC Bay Area, Giants versus Rockies live from Scottsdale Stadium. So Sunday, 7.30 p.m. on CSN Bay Area, the Legends 2012 Giants interview. With all the key guys, Bruce Bochy will be featured. Lots of great footage, and it really is a must-see for Giants fans, and we encourage you to not miss it. It's Sunday at 7.30 p.m. on CSN Bay Area. Legends. Crawford goes down to a knee. Posey digs it out. And just your average 6-3 put out, Crawford to Posey. Nice play. He's good.
one Padres as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, and this is how things ended for the Padres in the top of the fourth. A brilliant backhander. And the strong legs and the great balance of Brandon Crawford. Nice dig out of the dirt from Posey. Just a reminder of how good this guy is and was last year. And Ramon Ramirez, who really doesn't know a whole lot about Brandon Crawford, just found out that he's good. Best friends. You know, if you're an infielder and you make plays like that, you will definitely make that pitcher love you. So here is Brandon Crawford. Crawford struck out in the first inning. Garcia rarely throwing a whole lot straight in this game. Gets a swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. Sandoval on deck, and then Buster Posey. Six strikeouts for Garcia. This is tap to Garcia. One out. I think if you're a Giants hitter right now, you just can't expect a whole lot. Well, aren't these the toughest guys to hit early in spring? Absolutely. I mean, he's as dookie as dookie can be. The best fastball has been 87, and he really hasn't come across the middle to play with it. He just sort of showed it to you. And then he's pitching off that with a, an, an assortment of off speed stuff. He's looked fantastic though. But he really needed to, to have a good outing. His previous outings were not good. But he has been stellar tonight. Sandoval struck out in the first inning. Here he fouls this one out of play. Sell out crowd here tonight at Scottsdale Stadium. The crowds have been good for the defending world champions. And like Mike said, if you come into town and you walk around the old town Scottsdale area and you're a Giants fan, you can find friends quickly. Quickly. Well, all the bars and restaurants around Scottsdale Stadium have the same sign. Welcome San Francisco Giants fans. Yep. You might even meet this guy. He's a big USA fan. Sandoval chops this one to Alonzo. Two outs. This offseason, Buster Posey went into New York to pick up his MVP award, and while he was there, he went to Yogi's Museum. It was all ash, right? Ash, ash. Now I get one of yours, right? <laughs> I'll take that one. He said he really enjoyed meeting. The Hall of Fame catcher. And uh, just very respectful to that terrific old Yankee. Those he's bounced out in the second. And he takes a strike. Uh, Yogi's pretty unique. I mean, not a big guy anyway. He was 5'8 when he was playing, and he's been shrinking for the last 60 years. Yes, he has. But they both share one thing in common, and that's the tools of ignorance, that catching equipment. And when you're in that fraternity, that is a strong fraternity. Catchers get around old catchers, and uh, as you saw with Buster Posey, Posey, there's a lot of reverence there, a lot of respect. Posey, off the end of the bat, finds the center of the diamond. It reaches the outfield in a base hit for Buster Posey. That's a true believer right there. Yeah, it's a good thing he started up high, right? Yeah, he wants to add a few more banners down his arm. He's got room. There have been a lot of Giants tattoos put on Giants fans in the Bay Area and really around the country. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, where would you put it? Pence takes high and away. I don't know. Yeah. 
neck, maybe. I think he could pull that off. Penn struck out looking in the second. Two balls and no strikes. Who would you put? Just that, world champions. Again. Two balls and no strikes. Posey with his lead at first. First Giants tattoos that I saw on a body yeah. was Mike Sadek at Fantasy Camp about 20 years ago. Yeah. And every time the Giants changed their logo, he had to add on. Yeah. Three balls and no strikes to Pence. And Pence takes the four pitch walk. And here's Hector Sanchez. Like Sidic, the old Giants catcher. Sanchez struck out. To end the second inning. about Bruce Bochy in game four of the World Series? The game where the Giants clinched the World Championship. Hector Sanchez, maybe the logical choice to be the designated hitter in that game. But uh, the magic of the Giants skipper, he goes with Ryan Terrio. Who <laughs> had some big at-bats in that game. Ends up scoring the winning run. Ticked at Terrio. Missed the parade. Yep. And he's not here. Yep. That goes flying. This is rolled to Jerko, and that'll end the inning. Giant strand a pair. Fifth inning coming up. 2012. 2013. Chat with Giants insider Andrew Baggerly. He'll provide updates and answers to all your questions regarding the Giants as they gear up for the regular season. Chat with Andrew Baggerly tomorrow at noon. CSNBarrier.com, your home for authentic Barrier sports. Andrew Baggerly is in attendance. It's George Contos, the new pitcher. Contos, the pitch. The fifth inning. So a pretty nice job by Freddie Garcia. Oh, he was outstanding. Let's take a look at the numbers for George Contos. He's having a good spring. Six innings, six hits allowed, one walk, seven punch outs. His velocity with the fastball is in 90 uh, ish. And a really good hard slider. He's working on an off speed pitch to go with. The slider fastball combination. You know, when you get to the big leagues as a young pitcher, you, you tend to stay with the pitches that got you here, and you, and you really have to be encouraged to bring in some new looks. And, uh, and that's what Mark Gardner and Dave Getty really pride themselves with, especially with guys in the bullpen. Because there are not a lot of guys out there in the pen that have confidence in three pitches, but it's so important 
especially when you're trying to get guys out from both sides. If you're a right-handed specialist, that's one thing. But if you're getting lefties and righties out, as George Contos will have to do, he needs a changeup. He needs to understand the fastball and two-seam and four-seam. Travis Buck is going to pinch hit for Freddie Garcia. And Buck doesn't waste any time as he pops one into shallow left field. It'll be Sandoval in front of Crawford. One out. So here's Cabrera. Cabrera has been on base twice, reached on an air, and then had an infield hit. He started the rally in the third inning off of Lincecum. to the follow. Back up the middle, over the bag, into center field. And Cabrera now on for the third time in this game. Now, when he first came up, he was a guy that would hit a lot of balls in the air. And they said, you know, your, your money is not in the air. It's on the ground. You need to stop that. And that's what he's done a very good job of learning how to do take swing out put the ball in play take advantage of those legs there you go oh yeah yeah taking a trip say what about 18 20 months Amaristas get into a double play and then knocked in the first run of this game I know when they first start to walk steps are they're a big deal. And I thought that little one was doing pretty good. Steps are a big deal to me. Sandoval. In at third. Big swing and a miss by Amarista. Cabrera stole second base in the third. You would expect him to try again here in the fifth. Let's see if I can Yeah, he does. Yep. Train him early. Uh, that little, little one right there oh, looks boy, good I think to the you. The camera captivated him. Those eyes. Oh. Happy little guy. Out of play off his fist is Cantos. Snuck that one in on Amarista's hand. Now that's a 93 mile an hour fastball. For the most part of last year, he was right around 89 90. And what happens when you have a really great slider like Cantos has, and it's a no dot slider, it's a very deceptive pitch because of the rotation. You throw too many sliders, you start to lose fastball. And one of the projects they have with him this year is to throw more fastballs because he's got a good one. Throw more fastballs, you get more velocity. Runner goes. Throw is going to go into center field. And Marista strikes out. Cabrera steals second and moves to third on the throwing error by Sanchez. But the important play in that scenario is the strikeout. Their fastball is the payout pitch. Just changed grip through a two seamer, ran away from Amarista, swung right through it. Set up on the outside corner and throw it right through his target. Nice finish. Here's Katze. Katze struck out in the first and then tripled and scored. He tripled down the right field line off of Lincecum. It was Lincecum's last hitter. And he did that in the third inning. 3 1 Padres here in Scottsdale Stadium in front of a stacked and packed house. Been Lincecum, Edlifson, Ramirez, and now Cantos.
wide again. It's three and zero. Oh. The on deck hitter is Jesus Guzman, a right-handed hitter. So maybe Contos is having ideas of his own that he'd like to face Guzman instead. See a lot of 3 0 swings in spring training, too, from veterans. And Katsay will take the walk. And judging on the location of those pitches, it didn't look like he wanted any part of them. I think you're right. You come to camp, especially when you're established, it allows you the opportunity to, to work on a few things. And for Contos, changing the grips of the fastball, working with a changeup. Maybe or a split. So when you're trying to fight for a job, I mean, you're not going to be working on a new pitch. You're not going to take a chance with it unless you believe in it 100%. Guzman has popped out and he has walked. I think back when Sergio Romo got to the big league camp, he was basically a two pitch guy. He was a fastball slider guy. And then he kind of got labeled a specialist and he didn't like that. And then all of a sudden he goes to. Our Gardner said, "What do I need to do?" He said, "Well, learn a sinker and learn a changeup," and he did. And now he's a guy who's in charge of a whole inning, and it's escalated to where he's the closer. A strike that Sanchez couldn't hang on to. It's one ball and one strike. Is that called boxing one up right there? And he's boxed a few tonight. But as you point out in talking as the skipper pointed out as to how hard it is to see for hitters. It's the same thing for a catcher. Good pitch. One and two. And this ballpark really wasn't built for night games. I mean you've got lights here and they they will use them during the summer months but spring training not very often will you have a night game. They're definitely below the standards of what you have at AT&T or any other big league field. And because of that, hitters don't like it, and nor do catchers. See what Cantos does here, a one and two. And a base hit to left field is Guzman. As it shoots by Gillespie, and that's going to allow Katze to try to score, and Katze will score. So Guzman with a solid single and Gillespie with a gaff. Well, Giants defensively did not have been playing rather sloppily. Here, uh, another miscue that winds up cost them a run. Well, the official score is going to give Guzman a double, and I don't think that that's the right call. But. Hey, it is spring training. That looks like Mitch Lively throwing in the bullpen. When you're playing night games in spring training, night games for the first time, as this is the first night game for the Giants, did you uh, have a problem in the field? You know, Mike, there's a foul back because Alonzo had a big cut. It, it never bothered me defensively, but it it was an issue. At the plate. Remember, I was dealing with things hit on the ground. I think Gillespie's issue out there was he slipped. It's 0 and 2 now to Alonzo. You can see what Contos does when his back is against the wall. He's going right to his bread and butter, and that's that slider. On deck is Jed Jerko. And Alonzo pops this one out of play. Well, when it was all said and done on that play that knocked in a pair, it was a good at bat from Guzman. Well, he did not beat a hanger. He went down and beat a pretty good pitch. It was down below the knees. And I agree with you. Two strike count. 
Come up with a knock like that, beat a good pitch, and not get a run. Two runs. Alonzo strikes out swinging, and that will eventually end the inning. So two runs here in the top of the fifth inning. Well, the World Baseball Classic is in full swing, and the Giants are well represented. The semifinals and finals are coming up at AT&T Park with the final game a week from tonight. And a few of the players spoke to SFG Productions recently about playing in the WBC. Having the chance to play for my country means uh, a great sense of pride to, to put the Team USA jersey on, uh, to represent the country, the great country we live in, and just represent all of our great fans that, that love baseball and, and support us day in and day out. It brings a lot of pride to my heart, uh, honors me to be part of this team, and also makes me a role model for the young kids coming up. Having the chance to play for my country means to me a lot, you know. It's one of the dreams going through, you know, like all the, all the kids want to play for your own country to represent the country, to give you the opportunity, you know, all the chance to give you the, that title back home, you know. It's, uh, it's one of the dreams when you have, uh, when you, in your childhood, you want to be. I think uh, when I see the country's flag on the jersey, I think about honor, I think about respect, I think about uh, safety, uh, and I think about freedom. Well, winless the or witness the national pastime hit the international stage, and it's at AT&T Park. It'll be on March 17th, 18th, and 19th. Now you can host a party in a newly renovated suite. Premier locations available on the Oracle Suite level. Purchase tickets, call 415-972-2298 or visit sfgiants.com slash World Baseball Classic. See Marco Scudero, Pablo Sandoval for Team Venezuela. Casilla is still in it with the Dominican Republic. Sergio Romo, Pagan with Puerto Rico, and then the Giants... Jeremy Affelt, who I understand pitched tonight, as Bruce Bochy said. And pitch well. You saw Ryan Vogel's song. Those were the Giants players that were in it. USA team just beat Team Puerto Rico 7-1. to one. That game just finished. So on the mound is I have no idea. And at the plate is Cole Gillespie. So no idea throws to Gillespie, and it's a call strike. They're telling us it's Kevin Quackenbush. And uh, and I'm sure somebody's not kidding. No, it's old man Quackenbush's kid. And Gillespie takes a strike. It's nothing in two. When you're focused on reading promos and they throw in nine new guys they just become fly ball to left well, I've been wanting to see this guy throw I mean he, he signed his first year was 2011 but in two seasons of minor league baseball he's throwing 99 innings he struck out 141 against 34 walks and his career minor league ERA is 0.81 eighth round pick in, two, in the 2011 draft Having a good spring. As Gillespie takes high. We have Javier Lopez. Down in the Giants dugout. He's going to visit with us. It's one and two. There's Javier Lopez. See? Yeah. Told you. He's down there. He might actually talk if we have to ask him a question. Hey. You started out camp. You got banged up a little bit. But you're fine now. Correct. Yeah, ready to go. Um, Bum Gardner owes me a good dinner, I think. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was trying to build up his confidence, and unfortunately, I got hurt. It's two and two. And there's the pitch Mike's talking about from Quackenbush. You follow? I mean, you were scheduled to play for Team Puerto Rico. You follow what's going on? I'm sure you do. Yeah, definitely. I think this is a great time for baseball. Uh, obviously. Uh, I wish I could play for Team Puerto Rico. I think it's a great time. I think uh, I've been texting with uh, Angel. He's doing great. He's enjoying it. And, you know, it's a great time to be able to play in front of those folks down there. And, you know, obviously they lost to the U.S. today, but, uh, you know, it's, they're making a nice run, and the U.S. guys are doing great, and Bogey and Affeld in particular. 
Here's Tanaka who bounced out in the third inning. So you got banged up a little bit and I know you've pitched once. Have you pitched twice since then? <laughs> yeah, I made my second outing uh, yesterday against the Rangers and went pretty well and um, I'm, I'm back out there tomorrow and I think it's going to be every other day from here on out. So here's Tanaka and this is down the left field line and it's foul as Guzman made a dive and it came up empty. Obviously, you said it earlier in spring, you need about six innings to, to feel like you get your rhythm. How are you after a couple outings? I'm actually, I'm pretty pleased with where I'm at. Um, the first outing, the off-speed stuff was actually pretty good, but then it kind of regressed a little bit yesterday. But uh, the location is important for me and keeping the ball down in the zone, and I've been able to do that in both outings. So, yeah, as I get going here, I think, you know, five, six, maybe even seven appearances and get the innings uh, up uh, get the arm speed going. I think everything will kind of just level out, but uh, feeling pretty good so far. As yes, Tanaka takes a pitch inside. Well, you're a little bit different because you have a number of different arm angles that you will use. When you start out in spring, which one do you start out with? The main one, just the, the sidearm stuff for right now. Um, just trying to make sure I can get those pitches over from that slot. And then as I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable and getting in positions where I can try some new stuff, that's when I'll mix in the a little bit higher, a little bit lower stuff. Um, but I don't expect to be doing that this uh, tomorrow, maybe even the outing after that. But usually right at the end of the month, I'll start mixing in the new stuff. One and two to Tanaka. And Tanaka, he'll do this a lot as he follows this one down the left field line. Well, I, I like what you said there, new stuff. Everybody's always got a... a, a an a project that they're, that they're working on. Are you, are you willing to share what you're working on? Or are you a little sensitive that there might be some hitters watching? Knuckleball. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm working on my four-seam high velocity. I'm going back to my college days, and I'm going to try to go over the top and, and see if I can run it up there in the 90s like I used to. So, now, you know, I, I, again, I'm just trying to get uh, get more consistent with the stuff. Uh, I, I changed up my slider grip, uh, big sweeping slider. I wanted to be able to throw it a little more consistently over the plate and I've tried to do some tweaking with that. A little mechanical changes here and there. You know, I was told a long time ago, the older you get, uh, you always add pitches, you never subtract. So that's kind of what I'm doing. If somebody shows me something that, that might help, I'm going to try to work it and, and see if it if it's operational. Sometimes it's not, but, you know, you, you got to mess around the older you get. Here's Brock Bond pinch hitting, and he takes a curveball for a strike. Um, you were one of the guys that were on both of the championship teams, 2010, 2012. How was this offseason different than the one after the 2010 season? Well, I think a lot of things were a little bit different for the guys. Um, you know, I feel 2010 obviously was an unbelievable year, and you got to be able to separate that. Being able to bring the title back in that year was awesome, and the fans really appreciated it. And then, and obviously that came with a lot of uh, media responsibilities and things like that. And guys weren't accustomed to that and I think that may have distracted some of the some of us uh, going through it but oh, uh, distracted a few of us but going into this offseason everybody kind of knew what was going to what was going to come of them and uh, be asked of them and, and everybody did a great job of being able to manage their time wisely and I feel like a lot of guys coming into spring training really were ready to go as opposed to 2011 I think a lot of guys were just you know, overwhelmed with some of the demands that were put upon him, and, and it made us ha get off to a little bit of a slower start in spring. All right. Well, stay healthy, and uh, we're looking forward to more outings. And then we'll be checking out that secret pitch you got going. So. Thanks, Javi. 5 1 Padres.
in LCS, the St. Louis Cardinals. And the only way to be guaranteed a seat is through an opening day six-pack. You'll be there for the opener plus five other pre-selected games this season. So go to sfgiants.com slash tickets and get your tickets. Six-pack. Giants Cardinals, that is always good. Our best, by the way, to Mike Matheny, who had a uh, surgery on his back. He had it on Monday. And uh, I got a text from him. He said he's about two seconds after the surgery, he felt better. That's how it works with backs. Yeah, so anyway, our best to him. We'll see him that opening weekend. Mitch Lively is the new pitcher. Great name for a pitcher. Well, you got to have lively stuff. I got the scouting report from Bob and Marianne Cano. He said when he was in San Jose, fastball, slider, changeup. All right. It's one great tradition that they have down in San Jose with the young giants down there is a lot of times they'll have host families that the young players will live with. And uh, it really has begun, has become a a great tradition in that when the guys from San Jose when, if and when they get to the big leagues it's always that that meeting not only with their own family but with their their family from San Jose more tickets absolutely more tickets a player has to get but those are tickets you love to get and lively then. facing Jerko Lively threw that ball right by Jerko. One out. Bond is at second base. You saw him. Here's Cody Ransom. Does that feel feel better now? Do you... I, I got to get out of my system. Sorry. So here's Cody Ransom. Ransom has struck out twice. Once by Lincecum, once by Ramirez. John Baker is on deck. Five one. Padres sixth inning. Hit to right. Hit well. Tens back. Gone. Cody Ransom, opposite field home run. He hit it to the hot part of this ballpark. And it's six to one. Pretty impressive at bat. You look at his line tonight, two strikeouts at a home run. That's how the power hit hitting guys are. Although I don't know that I'd ever classify him as a power hitting guy, but when you go opposite field like this, you definitely get the coaching staff talking about it in the dugout. You think that's a home run in AT&T Park? No. Here's John Baker who takes it in the dirt. I'm not sure the one that Pablo Sandoval hit over the pavilion in batting practices out of candle <laughs> at uh, AT&T or candlestick. The beauty of that ballpark. Oh, heaven on earth. Baker takes low. And a strike at the knees. Travis Buck is on deck. Check swing. Two and two. Mitch Lively, number 77. Now, well, the 70s are usually for guys who are non roster guys. 
First time I ever saw a funky number get to the big leagues was Dave Haverlow. Went to camp as a non-roster player with the Giants back in, it was 1976, as number 60. Yeah. And he made the team. And he said, I'm not giving it up. It's my lucky number. That's Bond. Something's going on at second where throws are a little offline to Buster Posey. Two outs. And Buck batting for the second time. All right, let's take a look at it. Plenty of time, perhaps too much time. Whoop. A little goosey. Hey, work out the kinks in spring training. Never happened during the regular season. No, of course not. Buck saw one pitch and popped out to Pablo Sandoval. Here he takes a big cut and he fouls it back. No balls in one strike. Popped out of play again. You know, the, the two mindsets in spring training, if you're a young player, like Lively, this is the seventh game of the World Series. You're in a big league uni, you're facing big league hitters, you're in a packed house, you're on the same field with defending world champions. This is not just another whole home day at the no. yard. Good pitch. <laughs> Lively good as he walked off the mound. And that ends the inning. The home run by Ransom. 6 1 as we head to the bottom of the six. Area. 6 1 Padres. We are going to the bottom of the set, sixth inning. Padres have swung the bats well tonight. They got hit the Giants 7 to 3. Giants a little sloppy in the field with two errors. The pitcher now for the Padres will be Arturo Lopez. And you see his numbers for spring three and a third, three hits allowed. Those are good numbers. You're a lefty and you can get people out. You can go from a ball to the big leagues in a hurry. We have multiple changes. We'll get them to you when we get them. You see, Luke's is warming up in the bullpen. I do know that the new catcher is John Baker. So Baker is, after he pinch hits, stays in the game. So it'll be Lopez to Baker to face Blanco, Crawford, and Sandoval, a couple of left-handed hitters, and then the switch hitter. 6-1 Padres here in the sixth inning. Well, join us Saturday for upcoming telecast in the Cactus League. Actually, it's Sunday, March 7th, Rockies and Giants. On March 17th, 3 p.m. on NBC Barrier. Then the 23rd is in Giants on Comcast Sportsnet Barrier. That's at 1 p.m. and that'll come to you right here, Scottsdale Stadium. Okay. Dressing them out. 
That's okay. They're trying really hard. Uh, they're great. I love it. <laughs> you think they had some fun doing that? Here's Blanco, and Blanco runs up and takes a ball. One ball and no strikes. And I guarantee they've got names for every figurine that's on their hat. And a bunt. And it's going to roll, and it's going to roll foul. There you see our ladies. Oh, yeah, this one here. That's Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, Angel Pagan, and Marco Scudero. Over here, Hector Lopez, the Panda, Brandon Belt, and Sergio Romo. They actually did that better than you did the defense in the first inning. Over here, it's the whole organization. That's a well-trained bat right there. Takes a while, but you can get him to do that. So Blanco, who must have ran down to where the YMCA used to be, now gets back. It's one ball and one strike. He should try and bunt again. Blanco trying again, pops it out of play. The new third baseman is Gregario Petit. So there's Petit. And well, there's your scorecard, typical of spring training. By the end of the game, it looks like it's bleeding. Jaff Decker is in center field. Not Jeff, Jaff. Down low, two and two. Arturo Lopez, the pitcher of the Padres, is no baby. He's been in organized baseball for 13 years. He's got 13 days in the big leagues. So he has paid his dues. Foul past Tim Flannery. Another good opposite field approach. And for Gregor Blanco against left-handers, that is one of the things that he's been working on this spring. Keep that front shoulder in a little bit longer. You, for the most part, you're going to see stuff that's away. If you're a left-hander hitting off a left-hander. And lefties were a weak spot in his game last year. Down low, three and two. And he's thought of as being part of a two-man platoon if the Giants were to break camp today it would be Blanco against the righties and Andres Torres against the lefties and if you're Blanco I mean you don't like that you want to show that you can hit lefties well it's a good at bat right there as he takes the walk and that'll bring up Brandon Crawford One thing you learn to do as a big league player or a professional player is you'll listen to the criticism about your game. And there aren't that many 5 2 guys that, that don't have weaknesses in their game, and whatever your weakness is, that's what you work on. Crawford is struck out, and he bounced him back to the pitcher. A life changing day for the Crawfords. On December 18th, 2012, the Crawfords became parents. Brandon's wife, Jalen, they had a girl, Braylon Ann. That changes everything. Oh, yeah, it absolutely does. It changes everything. Sandoval on deck. Down low. Yeah, those carefree days where you'd come home and uh, you look up, it's 9 30 at night. Hey, let's go to the show. Okay, I'm in. Sleeping in? Forget about it. Yep. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Yeah. 
and that's a four pitch walk and that's going to aggravate. But black. And here comes Sandoval. Buster Posey on deck. Kings wear rings. Yes, they do. Chance going to get their new ring. First home stand. It'll be the Sunday game against the Cardinals on March, or make that April 7th. Ring ceremony day. I'm not sure if we have to put the tuxes on or not. I just might wear it the whole year. That's how I'm feeling right now. Sandoval has struck out. He's bounced out. There is a bit of irony in that they're going to be getting them in the series with the Cardinals, the team they beat. That were the world champions of 2012. Or 2011, I beg your pardon. And of course, they were the team the Giants beat in the NLCS to get to the in World a Series. Spirited series, I might add. Whew, game seven. I saw the replay of the seventh game where the Giants were leading with nine nothing or whatever yeah, it was. Started to rain. Started to rain. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that was out of a movie. Sandoval gets jammed. He got a late jump out of the box, and because of that. That's a double play. And here's Buster Posey. Buster Posey bounced out in the second, singled in the fourth. This one out of play. No balls and one strike. Look out. That ball gets away from Lopez. Blanco down the line at third with two outs. Posey started to go but held up. Two balls and a strike. Buster Posey on that Saturday of opening day weekend will receive his MVP trophy. I also think it's his bobblehead day. Three and one. Well, I, you know, when you think about it, it's when you know when you've made it. Not when you get your MVP awards, when you get your bobblehead. That's true. That locks you in. Was he right on that one? It stays at three and two. That's one he wants to see again. Three and two. Baker setting up on the inside part of the plate, and Posey fights it off, and you'll see another pitch. It's been talked about a lot, and you really have to talk about it a lot when you talk about what Buster Posey has done in his young career. Rookie of the year, two world championships, MVP. Wins a batting title. Comeback player of the year. Comeback player of the year. Up front. Pops it up. Petit. 
Side retired. No runs, two walks, one left. It remains 6 1. Time now for a look behind the scenes of a great Giants moment. Remember how Hunt Pence fired up the Giants? Hey, Bochi, what was the best pregame speech you've ever heard? Well, there was that one in Cincinnati. Stuff. That's hysterical. Good stuff. Yeah, you can't miss that one. Now, remember game three, Hunter Pence did it for the first time. This was game four. Remember, the Giants had to win all three in Cincinnati. Cincinnati had not lost three in a row in their ballpark all year. So Hunter Pence did it once. He did it again. And whatever it takes, baby. <laughs> it was working. This is a picture of was taken in about 1970. The uh, Teak fraternity at, at Carbondale, Illinois. Mike circled. Yeah, whoever that guy is. But anyway, yeah. he reminded Ted Griggs that all that activity in Cincinnati of that picture. Hunter Pence's director's cut. It's Shane Luke's on the hill facing Everett Cabrera, and that's fouled out of play. Well, if you win a world championship, you should be able to have some fun, and they definitely did. And we do encourage you to check out the show. There's a strike at the knees to Cabrera and uh, Sanchez. Having a hard time handling that one. There you see the numbers for Shane Luke's this spring, and they are fantastic. He has come in with one intention and he wants to be a member of this team when they break to go north. And he's very much in contention. Slowly hit. It'll be a tough play. And Brock Bond has no chance with the speed of Cabrera. And that's the fourth time he's been on. Well, I have a tough time getting him out now. Adam Duvall is now at third base. Nick Noonan is at short. Red Pill is at first. And uh, the Giants' new center fielder is Gary Brown. Here's Jeff Decker. Decker came in for Amarista. And a quick toss to first. Cabrera's back. Really, the spot in the Giants pitching staff that is being fought for is Guillermo Moda's spot. And Chad Godin is having a great spring, as is Shane Lukes. And that spot is a unique spot. There's a strike on the outside corner. And you've got to be able to 
to have stuff that you can get into an existing inning early. If your starter gets knocked out, you're the first guy in. And oftentimes, you're going to be asked to get a ground ball to get out of an inning. And then you're going to be asked to spot start if somebody blisters up or gets sick. You're the guy that has to go in there and give them four innings two times through the lineup. Duvall. Bond. Pill. That has always been a bread and butter pitch for Shane Luke's that good sinker. Five. Four. Lots of time. Three. Brock Bond does not have a strong arm, and he has to rely on quick hands to get that ball over to first base in time to complete it. Here's Petit batting for the first time. But situations like that, when you're trying to win a job, are things that stick out in the mind of a pitching coach and a manager. Petit gets jammed, but he got off his foot. And it's no balls and one strike. Start an inning, guy gets on with a walk or an air or a play that 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 a hitter legs out, puts too much pressure on a defense. If you come back next guy up, get a ground ball, double play. Those are things that are remembered. That's a feather in your cap. And I think for the most part, if you're gonna be a long man on a staff, you've got to have a good sinker. Foul back is Luke's hung that. It's nothing and two. For two reasons. One, you can come into an existing inning with that singer, you can get two outs. Yep. And two sinker ballers, for the most part, don't throw a lot of pitches. Yep. So you can go four or even five innings in a spot start if you have to and not use up 50 pitches. It's the beauty of a sinker baller. A lot of outs within three pitches. Luke knocks it down, recovers. Side retired. Nice inning for Shane Luke. Giants are coming up. 6 1. Comcast Sportsnet Studios coming up on Sportsnet Central after the game. Free agency begins in a frantic pace, and a big name could be heading to the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not telling you who just yet. The Raiders cut a pair of former number ones, and the Raiders looking Moneyball-like. And we have highlights of USA and Puerto Rico in the World Baseball Classic. All that on Sportsnet Central. Following the game, let's go back to Crook and Kite. All right, thanks, Dave. Here it's Hunter Pence to lead things off. And he'll be facing the new pitcher, Daniel Stange. As Kipe said, Daniel Stange, the new pitcher, product out of UC Riverside. There's his spring. Really just had the one bad outing. Cody Decker is the new first baseman as Pence takes a strike. We've got Brendan Crawford hooked up. Down in the Giants dugout. It's 6 1 Padres and an 0 1 count. 
to Hunter Pence. You're just talking, Brandon, about uh, a life-changing moment for you and your wife. A baby. Yeah. How's that going so far? Uh, it's going well. Um, you know, she's, she's a lot of fun. She's two and a half months old now. Um, changing a lot of diapers. <laughs> uh, getting a little sleep. Uh, she's been a lot of fun. Well, it's always important that we ask this question so some of the moms at home might appreciate you more. You do change diapers. <laughs> I'll change an occasional diaper, yeah. Right, okay, good. Well, that's official then. Yeah. So an occasional this... diaper? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she gets a lot of them, but, you know, she she poops a lot, so <laughs> I help out sometimes. Atta boy. Yeah. Two and two to Pence, and Pence hits this one on the ground. Knocked down by Jerko, and Pence is retired. Well, a different spring for you, Brandon. This year, you're, you're, you're a veteran. Uh, you and Brandon Bell both really, the last couple, two, three months of the season last year, really settled in, and, and you got your confidence as a big leaguer. Now you come in to this camp. How is it different from last year? Uh, I'm just more comfortable with all the guys and, you know, playing a full season with everybody and uh, coming back and, and being the starting shortstop with the year under my belt. Uh, just a little more comfortable overall. The confidence is a little higher and, um, you know, just overall a little more comfortable, but, you know, still working hard uh, like I would any spring training. This is Hector Sanchez facing Stange. Sanchez is struck out and he's bounced out. You know, it is, you know, look, after my first year in the big leagues, it is different when you come to camp. It's one less thing you don't have to worry about whether you're going to play or not. And you can just get ready. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I worked out in, in January to get ready. And, you know, just not maybe not quite as much as I would have uh, the past couple of years. Because most of the time you have to come in here and impress somebody. You're yep. trying to make the team. That almost got Sanchez on the foot. It's one and two. Yeah, the other part, too, is you had a chance to play next to Marco Scudero for a good couple of months and then in postseason for another month. Hey, you know who you're going to be throwing the ball to, and, and that's also comforting. Yeah, definitely. Last year I was throwing to uh, Terrio and, and Manny Burris, so we didn't know who the second baseman was going to be. Um, yeah, this year is definitely a little bit different. Petit's got to try to throw out Sanchez, and he does. And Sanchez hit the bag wrong, and now he's limping. Two down. And that'll bring up Gillespie. You miss him? Marco? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I was, I was listening to him a lot in the cage and trying to pick up some things, uh, just kind of his approach and, and what he does in certain situations. Uh, so I was, I was listening to him a lot. I was in his group for uh, batting practice, so... I just got to watch him in the cage and kind of see what he does to get ready. Well, the downside to the WBC is they leave and you don't get a chance really to work with them. But I'm assuming that what you did last year with him, working with him is going to be a snap. Yeah, I mean, I, I, he, he's a veteran guy. I know what he wants. He he knows what where I'm going to put it, um, turn a double play, I mean, and... Um, you know, the communication with Penn just kind of came together right away, right when he got to us last year. So it really shouldn't be a problem. Gillespie strikes out swinging. We'll say goodbye to Brandon Crawford. Thanks, Brandon. Eighth inning coming up. It is 6-1 Padres.
Well, still more than half of the games this year have tickets at $20 or less. You can check out sfjazz.com slash tickets right now to make your plans before prices increase. Buy early and save to see teams like the Phillies and the Nationals in May or the Brewers in August. Single-gate tickets are going fast, so grab your ticks now at sfjazz.com slash tickets. <laughs> Scott Proctor is the new pitcher. Guzman is at the plate. There's the veteran Scott Proctor. Guillermo Quiroz is now doing the catching. As this is fouled out of play. Scott Proctor, another guy in the mix for that long spot. As Kite mentioned, a veteran. He's 36 years old. He's got six years at the big league level. When we first saw Scott Proctor. He came out of the Yankee organization. He was throwing hard. Dodgers picked him up. And he went through a couple of injuries. And now this year, he's back. He's healthy. Not throwing quite as hard, but he's coming up with a split now. That has been his project pitch. And uh, he is not lacked for stuff. He's got swing and miss stuff. Guzman showing that what Mike just says is very true. You know, and I think that role that is open, the Giants long man, the guy that can swing, he can spot start, he can pitch really in, in any capacity, has to be a veteran, has to be a guy who's got some years under his belt because it's the toughest spot in that, in that pitching staff, and there are reasons for that. Here's Cody Decker. Also, Roger Kieschnick is now in right field, and Juan Perez is in left field. So if my scorecard is correct, Perez, Brown, and Kieschnick from left to right, Duvall, Noonan, Bond, and Pill from third to first, and Kiro's doing the catching. The reason that the long man is such a tough job is that you can go 10 days to 14 days or sometimes even longer without throwing. If you get a starting staff that's that's as good as the Giants, a lot of times you don't need that long man. And if you go inactive for a period of time, you start to doubt your stuff. A lot of guys don't know how to handle it. Because when you get that ball after 10 days of layoff, you know what you're expected to do? Your job. You're expected to get people out. They don't want to hear that you've been on the shelf for 10 days. Well, here's the deal on Proctor. With the Yankees in 07, make that 06, 83 appearances. With the Yankees and Dodgers in 07, 83 appearances. After that, injuries. I mean, he's of the mentality that all great relief pitchers have, and that is if I got this uniform on, I can pitch. They know they don't always ask their arms how they feel. They just say, yeah, give me the ball. And this is popped down the right field line. Pill moving over, and it's going to drift out of play. The 83 appearances in 07. He went to 2009, 41, and then he did not pitch in 09 because of surgery. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes here in the eighth inning. This is playable. It'll either be Bond or Pill. It's Pill. I mean, you think about the type of pitcher that Proctor was to him. He's a power arm. He was a guy who would throw 95 and above. And he was an all out guy every throw. He was not a finesse pitcher. And when you take the ball 83 times a year, that doesn't talk about all the times you got up and got heated and didn't get in. That's very true. High and foul and out of play. This is Jerko. 
but you know there's enough here. Styling. Absolutely styling. I mean, it's a little bit easier for a pitcher who doesn't throw as hard, who perhaps relies on movement, finesse, to, to absorb the type of workload that Proctor absorbed. But he has resurfaced this year. He's healthy. Still has a good fastball. I mean, he'll still run it up there 92 to 95, depending on the day. But now he's got other tools. He's got a split that he didn't have before. That's just foul. How foul was it? Just. I'm saying about the width of the ball. 6 1 Padres, eighth inning. Got him. Nice pitch. Side retired. Two strikeouts for Proctor. Got him in the eighth coming up. Got the Hyundai Sportsnet Central tonight, right after the game, right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, and they'll talk about the the newest 49ers and the ex 49ers. Also, Brian Sabian will talk about the 2000 upcoming thir 2013 upcoming year, and then of course Raider talk, and they have made some big cuts, and there'll be analysis of that, all that, and more tonight. Hyundai Sportsnet Central, right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, right after the game. Joe Thatcher on the hill now for the Padres. You take a look at the numbers he's had. Thatcher, a low three quarter slinger, but he's got some pretty good mustard on that fastball. A little 90s consistently. He can be nasty, especially if you're teeing off from the left side against him. The new left fielder is Jonathan Galvez. And the hitter will be Brett Pill. So Pill facing Thatcher. And he spins it in there for a strike and it's 0 and 1. On deck is. John loves Brock Bond. Because. You know who's on deck. Bond. Brock Bond. I mean that's right up his alley. John Miller, a big James Bond fan. Bill strikes out swinging. John Miller, a name fan. That's what he is. Yeah, he's. And we're a fan of John Miller. John was here today at the ballpark doing some uh, homework, sport a new lid. 
Looking rather dapper today in a Panama hat. Here's Brock Bond. One ball and no strikes. Bond a switch hitter. Open some eyes up this spring training. A guy they tell us that, well, what does he do really, really good? Well, he just does everything to help you win. And that's a compliment. Well, that's the label you want to get as a professional player. And he flips it in the right field of base hit. Singling is Brock Bond. And that was no hanger either. He went down and beat a pretty good pitch. And you talk about technique as to how to beat that pitch. Well, that's pretty much the way. Not a lot of lower body in the swing. Just let it get deep. Use your hands. Go the opposite way. You get him at a bat like that, you're locked in. Definitely put a smile on your hitting coach's face. Here's Gary Brown. Brown, he gets jammed and he flips it into left field. So Gary Brown with a base hit. Setting it up for Nick Noonan. And struggled early, but he's coming on. And it is four for 28. Thatcher to the left handed hitting Nick Noonan and a breaking ball for a strike. That you can see he sets right at the nose level when he comes set and it's one ball and one strike. Baker coming back but that's going to be out of play. And it's one ball and two strikes. Had a chance to see Nick Noonan basically grow up in the Giants organization. He was their sandwich pick, the 32nd overall selection in the 2007 player draft. And this will be his seventh year in the Giants organization. Lifetime 267 minor league hitter. There's a rally hat wear. Oh, yeah. And Noonan. Stays with the breaking ball, but he pops it up. Baker struggled, but he settles underneath it. Two down, and here's Adam Duvall. So Duvall coming up. And the one thing that will get your attention, and it will if you're talking about Adam Duvall, he hit 30 home runs last year. He had 100 RBIs last year in San Jose. And the 100 RBIs is only the fifth time a San Jose player has ever done that. He can hit. And he takes a call strike. 6'1", 205 pounds. And this season will be his fourth year in pro ball. And now he's behind 0-2 as Thatcher has yet to throw him a fastball. But his second year at Augusta, which is not an easy ballpark to hit home runs in, he hit 22. And that itself put him on the map. He had 87 RBIs in that season. Then he backed it up in San Jose with a 3,100 year you're talking about. 
And he was definitely one of those guys that Bruce Bochy was talking about before camp even started. Out of play down the left field line. The attendance tonight, 10,987. And that one is going to bed. And Dad's not that far behind. The ball skies this one to left field. It's Cabrera. Side retired. Ninth inning coming up. It's 6 1 Padres. April 1st, the Giants are going to take on the Dodgers in Los Angeles, and you can go to the game at Comcast at the Comcast Sportsnet Authentic Opening Day at AT&T Park. That's right. You can watch the Giants take on the Dodgers from L.A. on the scoreboard at AT&T. It's free admission, free hot dogs for the first 5,000 fans, free foam fist the first 3,000 fans. They'll have both World Series trophies on display. So put it down your calendar. Opening day. Even though the Giants are not in San Francisco, you can get to the yard and watch it with about uh, oh, thousands of your closest friends. So Monday, April 1st, doors open up at noon, game time 1 p.m. And if you need more information on this, log on to CSNBayArea.com. New pitcher now for the Giants will be Sandy Rosario. 6'1", 210 pound right hander. Giants claim him off waivers from the Cubs this last December. And this is what he has done in spring training. He's been impressive. Rosario, in his minor league career, 391 innings, he has 403 strikeouts. So he's got good stuff. And we're going to chance to see it right now. So Galvez will take a call strike and it's 0 and 1. Jonathan Galvez with John Baker to follow. And the pitch. And that fastball is high. Breaking ball, fisted in the center field, a base hit. Galvez with a single, and here's Baker. This is the eighth pitcher tonight for Bruce Bochy. Baker hit in the sixth inning against Mitch Lively and bounced out to second. It was Brock Bond who was in at second. Well, the way the game has evolved with starting pitchers. 
Perez says I've got this one and he does. And the way that the 100 pitch level has really. Defined an outing for a starting pitcher. You don't see a lot of com complete games during the season. And guys now I mean they they, they get ready in spring training to get to that 100 pitch level. I mean, when we played, there were guys that would have complete games in spring training. That'll never happen was, again. Obviously, at the end. Yeah. Well, it was Tom Candiotti, the guy who I saw <laughs> did it with Cleveland, knuckleballer. But still. Well, it's the 12th of March, and I realize it was quite some time ago, but. When I got the big league camp in 1974, this was about the date where you started your games. Of course, the season didn't start till maybe 10 days into April. Noonan to Bond to Pill. Rosario with a double play to end the inning. Bottom of the ninth coming up, 6 1 San Diego. Now Saturday 7 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area Giants Classic Games Championship Edition. It'll be the NLDS Game 5 at Cincinnati. Then on Sunday on NBC Bay Area Giants and Rockies live right here at Scottsdale Stadium. Sunday 7.30 p.m. CSN Bay Area Legends 2012 San Francisco Giants. Interviews with all the key guys. Manager Bruce Bochy is featured. Lots of great footage. Check it out. It's a don't miss. Brad Brock is the new pitcher. 6 1 Padres. New pitcher now for San Diego will be Brad Brock. Having a great spring. Three outings, no ERA. Giants fans will get their first look. At least. On Comcast, back in the Bay Area of Roger Kishnick. Kishnick, a good athlete, runs well, has got some power, and was really off to a great start last year, and then he got hurt. And he hammers this one to right. Buck is going back, and he'll put it away. He dropped it. And Kishnick is going to just motor over to. Third, and he'll make it. Now you got it. All right, I got it. I got this one. I yield. Gloves too big. Well, Sun did not get in his eyes. 
And for a big leaguer, that's an embarrassing play. Here's Juan Perez. And a fastball high to Perez. Perez last year hit over 300 in Richmond, 11 home runs, 53 RBIs, 18 stolen bases, and a really talented outfielder. Juan Perez out of the Bronx. 13 round pick. Up the middle and a base hit. And that's how you make an impression to your skipper. So Kishnik will score. And here's Kiros. It's great when you see prospects come up here for the first time. And they wait around and wait around. They get in at bat in the ninth inning and they come up and do something like that. I mean, all those little intangibles that affect an at bat where a guy could take an excuse and just say, well, you know, I had to sit around for three hours. You put a quality AB like that, like we just saw from Perez, that stays with the manager. I mean, I didn't say that till my sixth or seventh year in the big leagues. <laughs> Giants catcher takes the call strike. It's one ball and one strike. Francisco Piguero has grabbed the bat. He's on deck. At first, Perez. Up the middle, over the bag. Nice play by Jerko, and he dropped it. And now everybody's safe. Right, let's take a look. I mean, he makes a nice play getting to it. Right over the bag and just tries to do a backhanded flip. And that's where it starts to go a little weird. So the Padres getting sloppy here in the bottom of the ninth and the Giants making some noise. So here's Piguero who's having a terrific spring. And he has made an impression as he takes a called strike. Figueroa hitting 429. He's 12 for 28 with five RBIs. And the approach he's had is try to drive that ball into right center field. And it's a quick 0 2. Well, you're right about an impression because he's the guy that's been talked about most. This guy's probably going to go with five outfielders, and they're looking for a. a a fifth outfielder that can be defensive as a replacement, can spot a guy who's tired, has a little pop off the bench, has speed, and he's got all those things. Broadcasters Jinx, and here's Brett Pill. Pill with Bond on deck. A run in. Two runners aboard. 6 2. Padres. Pill trying to yank, and it's no balls in one strike. See, I believe in that broadcaster's jinx. I think we should do the reverse broadcaster's jinx. Guy gets in there who's having a good spring. We should just start saying, this guy is, I don't even know why he's here. It's, it's, he's, it's, a, it's a tired act. Pow! Triple. Center field. Decker moving over. Tagging is Kishnik. Actually, that's Perez tagging. He goes to third. So here's Bond in his third at bat. You know, the point I was making earlier about you know, how starting pitching has changed. This is an era of baseball where young players are really getting exposure in spring training because of the extended number of games, the B games, etc. Guys are getting a chance to, to play in front of big league managers and big league coaching staffs. And I think another thing, too, in our generation, when you got to the big leagues, 
you know, you really didn't say a word till four years. You didn't. And now, guys get to the big leagues, and the, the veterans really take care of their players to get them to a, a comfort level quicker. That has all changed. And I think this spring training has, there's a reason all these guys get at bats in front of crowds, get to play with other big leaguers. It's to get them to the comfort zone. It's sharply on the ground. Ball game is Bond, bounces out. And that'll do it here at Scottsdale Stadium. The game where Lincecum started. Nine other pitchers through. And the Giants drop this one. They go now six and eight. And they lose this one to the Padres by a final of six to two. So hope you enjoyed this one in front of a crowd of over 10,000. Coming up next is Sportsnet Central. For my partner, Mike Kruko, I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Thanks for joining us. And don't go away, because Sportsnet Central, that's going to start right now.